Life in the Oort Cloud Café had settled into a pattern once all the excitement had died down, and I had exercised the past. Maz had the book, although she didn't know it, and I had no intention of looking at it. The café was doing well, and the atmosphere on the station had improved now that the book had never existed, as far as everyone was concerned. I had done my extra hours training, and was now a fully qualified scooper pilot. I went out every now and again and did a shift to keep my hand in and cover the miner's leave. Sai had even come out with me for a spot of sightseeing. I had started my suit training as well. Tina had talked me into it, and after the initial fear it felt very liberating to bob around. I had learnt to do a few maintenance tasks on the shuttles and the exterior of the station. Even better than any of my other achievements, I had finally got off with Derek. We were officially an item, we were happy together, and my life was good. I spent a lot of time at his house on the lower farm level, and just used the cafe as a place to work. It was great to wake up to the sound of birds and the smells of the country. There weren't that many people in the solar system who could say that these days. And then it happened. I might have guessed it. Things were all working out, a sure sign that a big boot would come and kick me on the arse. It was Sai who spotted him. I was in the kitchen chatting with Clarissa. It was pie-making day, and I was engaged in a little quality control when he came in, looking worried. Andy, he said, don't react, but there's someone out there you might not want to see. I crammed the last of the fruit tart into my mouth and chewed. Then I went to the serving hatch and peered through. My stomach lurched and my head spun. Oh, bloody hell. That was all I needed. Just when I was getting on so well with Derek, a big slice of my past had turned up. The worst thing was that just the sight of him still made me come over all unnecessary. I felt a tingle and my face must have gone red. Tell him I'm not here, I said to Sai. And for goodness sake, get rid of him. Too late. He walked in. Maz must have told him where I was. Thanks for that. Looks like you can tell him yourself, Sai said dryly. Hi, Andy. He shuffled about, keeping his distance. Wise move. I tried to look him straight in the eye, but he was looking anywhere but at me. I'm glad to see you, he said. He sounded tired. I'll be off then, said Clarissa, sensing the tension that had come into the room with him. She left her stuff on the counter in her haste to leave. Trevor cast an approving eye at her rear as she departed. He hadn't changed that much since I'd seen him last then. It was always either love or hate with me and Trevor. For a long time it had been hate. Go away, I said. I'm over you, just like you were all over Maisie. Ouch. Fair enough. But honestly, I've only come here because I have nowhere else to turn. He'd switched on the charm, big eyes and sad face like a puppy caught next to a puddle. I didn't believe him, not for a moment. Why? She thrown you out? I asked as sarcastically as I could. Caught you at it like I did. It's not that, he whined. I need your help. That still didn't cut any ice with me. I was just getting started. Why should I help you? What about Madame Fluff doing a bit? Surely she's been very accommodating so far. Listen, Andy. I understand I shouldn't be here. I'm a shit and I treated you badly. That could win a prize for understatement. I was just about to give him more when I stopped. His shoulders were shaking and he'd started to cry. Macy's dead. Nearly a fortnight ago, he gasped. 